Alright, hi everyone. So today on today's podcast is gonna be pretty special because we actually have several special guests. We have Mr. Kanzume. Hello. Ashra Vichess, as you all know, and Noah. So Hello. um the topic of today's discussion is gonna be like uh, what are our thoughts on the post like post ban list? What, what what are our opinions on it? Maybe what meta changes is, uh, the meta is going to go through what do we like any upcoming decks we think will like actually arise because of let's say the banning of Sakazuki okay so pretty excited to have this podcast because we have all the like sort of local content creators with us so pretty excited let's hope we get some like nice brainstorms brainstorming session with some feedback from everyone okay so why don't we just start with uh what do you all feel about the ban list do you think it's a good ban list or maybe you have any like mixed opinions about it all right who wants to go first you can go first paul i i go first okay yeah. um i think it's okay so let's talk about the band list right the band list includes sakazuki right great eruption as well as reject wasn't yeah it? yeah reject yeah yeah okay so let's tackle you know the black the the, the big elephant in the room first like um i think great eruption is broken it's not fair no, I'm just kidding. Like, it, I think, yeah, since Starter that came out, like, it's been a really, really strong card. Uh, in fact, I, was, I had this chat with Sky before when uh, Black ST first came out with uh, Sakazuki, but the shitty one, right? And um, I had this chat, and I asked uh, Sky straight up, I was like, look, you know, what do you think? Like, do you think this is playable? And Sky actually told me straight up, it's got some decent pieces, like Great Eruption, but as a whole, the starter deck in and of itself uh, doesn't have enough pieces to, you know, really get the ball rolling. So to be fair, to put things into context, black decks, starting with the black full black Sakazuki, was shit, according to Sky Standards, when it first launched, right? Fast forward to today, we, you know, uh, to OPO5, was it? Then we got Sakazuki and everything changed, right? And of course, now we've got Moria and everything changed. So I think... Um, I think the ban on Sakazuki it was just was inevitable because it was just getting out of hand, right? You look at championships, you know, you have like what 10, 11 uh, Sakazukis on in in the in the top ranks. You go to locals, you know, everyone's running a Sakazuki. It effectively became a, are you a Sakazuki player or are you not, right? Um, all decks were just going into you know how to anti count how how to hard counter Sakazuki. Um, a lot of your decks, you know, that were playing. Um, uh, what do you call that? Very small bodies like RG Law, you know, were dominating in the first three sets and then just completely go white, right? Um, and so, and so, and so the deck building became very restrictive. And I think for that reason, it was, um, you know, inevitable that Sakazuki would get banned. Um, I personally, I think um, why Sakazuki was such a hot favorite was because it, you know, how most leaders they have like one ability, right? That's not necessarily game breaking, but then Sakazuki had a one drop, so you're constantly refreshing your hand from right off the get go, right? And then you know on attack you could you could minus one, and if you put minus one may like I had some people ask me like, but it's only minus one, like what's the big deal? You know it's not like an ice age, right? Um, but to put things in perspective, right? Like even just that little bit of minus one can turn the tides of battle, you know. Um, Take for instance, you're trying to bomb a five cost, and then you know the guy's a six cost blocker, and then you minus one, bang! Suddenly he's within range, right? So, so it's actually a, uh, it's actually very very strong as a leader because technically he's got uh you know he he has two uh, abilities, and outside of that, of course, you know he's dual color. So dual color, the idea is that you you know you drop them to four health because you know they've got a lot of resources open to them, right? Um, and so I think to be honest, um. I think, yes, I agree for the aforementioned points that Sakazuki is a very strong leader. Um, but I think Sakazuki alone is not what caused, you know, the, um, what do you call it, the meta shift, right? I think a lot of focus has been on the leader, right? Um, but, I mean, I think, uh, was it Tianhui or Fabian that was talking to me about this sometime back uh, when we met up? It's the Rebecca Hina Luchi combo. You know what I mean? That there was so much like I think really with OPOs five, six, and into seven, like they open up the whole, you know, in Pokemon we call it trash resource, which is your trash mm -hmm. as a resource. And um and after that opened up, you know, I don't know and I know Tiamu is gonna go to town on Moria, but um um just sticking with Sakazuki, you know, like that created so much more impact for Sakazuki as a leader, right? Um, because that meant that dropping the card to refresh your hand now has an additional purpose of setting up a, a brand new resource which is your trash 
So from that standpoint, I think my point being that I think it is a little bit unfair to say that, oh, you know, it's because of the leader alone, therefore, you know, it is out of control. I think it's a mix of both. But as a leader, yes, very strong. Great eruption, also a very strong card. Um, it's a draw one. Um, and of course, reject. For, for those of you who have been playing, playing shit tier decks against yellow players, you know, reject is your worst enemy. You know, everything, you know, at the, at the tail end, your extra life or even your one blocker on the table doesn't mean shit. You know, if, if your opponent's got a uh, reject, right? And in, and then reject into Amaru, you're done. So, all in all, I thought Moria would have been banned too. Yeah, I see. Um, I thought Moria would get hit. Know? In fact, that was what I actually what I wanted from the ban list. Like, just fucking, just hit, just hit <laughs> Moria, dude. Then, actually, if that happened, right, I think that Sakazuki would still retain his identity, even if it's like, let's say, mm. let's just say we replaced the Sakazuki ban with Moria. I think like at least most decks will still retain its identity. I think I mean obviously yeah. I think I guess like Black Moria does sort of die because they lose their boss monster. Yeah, actually it does. Right. So might might be a little bit too like uh like I would say too harsh. But maybe something yeah. that I was considering was like actually which was what I covered in the previous podcast. I was like expecting Moria to get like Ereta. Like instead of just like uh being able to play like any any card, any any cost character from like your trash. You lock it behind, mm-hmm. let's say, Trillabuck. Anyways, he's a, like, Trillabuck character. He's a Trillabuck, like, he's, like, the face of Trillabuck. So maybe you just lock him behind Trillabuck, and I think he'll be fine. This way, mm-hmm. like, Moria still, Black Moria will probably still be playable. Then, uh, I think Black, Sak- then, uh, like, Byu Sakazuki doesn't really lose his identity at all, just because you can still play, like, the removal deck as well, like, without Moria. Like, the deck doesn't necessarily need Moria. It's just that, yeah, it's just... What, suddenly now they have like this insane value generator that can also function as a can also function as like a removal board or you can just set up a board from nowhere and it's yeah it's just too much value in one card in my opinion so, yeah, so I was kind of expecting mm-hmm. that but since they hit the Saka leader then yep it is what it is I, I honestly agree like uh, similar to what Paul said I think the leader is a little bit too strong firstly dual color combination blue and black it's like a pretty dream combination actually like I think people were like hoping since OP01, I mean OP02, when Black got announced. Since OP02, people have been wanting for like a blue and black leader just because like you can combo cost reducers with powerful cards oh, like yeah. Mihawk. Or, like, yeah, like suddenly, like you know how last in last time in OP01, like blue doesn't really have a way to deal with 8 kit. Yeah. Imagine if you combine That's that with, painful. yeah, imagine you combine that with black cost reduction. Then you can go reduce the 8 kit's cost to like maybe 7 and then bam, Mihawk. Really? Yeah. Yeah, man, that's like, yeah, that was like the old OP01, OP02 days, and now, like, looking at how crazy Sakazuki became, like, we, they were just asking for, like, okay, let's reduce it by one. They ended up reducing by, like, a bajillion, like, cost-wise. But mm-hmm. I do agree with yeah. both of you in the point of Sakazuki. I, let me uh, acknowledge first that, yes, Sakazuki, extremely skill-based deck. Uh, like, there are a lot of sequencing that is very important in the deck, and I really do appreciate that about Sakazuki. But from a game producer's like point of view, like thinking of it from the lens of Bandai themselves, of the people who create the game, every single blue and black card has to be checked uh, because it can go into Sakazuki. And that's the reason why I kind of agree with the banning overall. Uh, it is a, I wouldn't call it an oppressive leader because honestly, it, yes, it, in higher level events, it took up like the 90% of the meta game. But overall, in massive events, you know, you see your annals, you see your... Uh, Zoro randomly here and there. You see a lot of variance in leaders, but from a game producer perspective, it was the right, absolute right call to ban it. Just, you know, nip it in the bud early on. You yeah. don't have to kind of deal with more blue and black later on. So, Sakazuki gone. You know what? There's still the, there's still the promo. <laughs> up, but I'm sure you guys can make it work. <laughs> yeah, I do agree with the bannings, and I didn't expect it to be banned initially. I thought they would hit Gekko Moria and even Rebecca. Or even Hina Luchi, um, just Erata would do fine. But not hitting Gekko Moria was actually a good thing as well. Even though I hate Gekko Moria. Reason being, if they hit Gekko Moria, I think all black decks, they would lose their boss character. Right now, their only boss character mm. would be Tenkos Kuzan. So if you're looking at maybe black, yellow, Luffy, losing Gekko Moria would, I think, make the deck not as good as it is right now. Yeah, and Sakazuki leader being hit also is also a good thing because being able to draw one card every turn is actually very good in every TCG. Digging through your deck, 
gives you a lot more uh, options compared to the opponent. So I think the banning is quite justifiable. And I think we didn't touch on um, reject as much mm-hmm. just now. Mm-hmm. So I felt reject was fine, but pairing it with Amaru and even the new OPO7 Blaze Slice card, I think that two pair is really too strong. So either one of them have to go, and banning reject was perfectly fine. I mean, from a competitive perspective? Oh yeah, no, I can go ahead. Ah, no, no, I'm, I'm done. Oh, okay. Okay, maybe from a competitive perspective, I think um, banning Sakazuki is a very good decision from the game uh, team developers part. Because first and foremost, I think Sakazuki is just... It, it, uh, the banning of Sakazuki will open up a lot of pathways for the previously... Uh, uh, um, the previous leaders, such as an uh, example would be like Purple Luffy. I think Purple Luffy mm-hmm. is... Is definitely coming back with Saka getting banned, and I think so. So many other like decks we can explore right now with the ban of Sakazuki, and uh, um, I think the best part of the ban list is actually reject though for me personally. I kind of mm. I really hate reject. This card just allows uh yellow decks, especially Katakuri, to like uh gain little out of nowhere, man. You can be at, like two life suddenly mm. you get like double reject into a big mom swing. With it. Like, doesn't make sense from a competitive perspective. So, mm. really happy about the reject addition in uh, to the band list, yeah. Yeah, we all hate yeah. yellow here. <laughs> Everyone in. I still hate yellow. Come on. Like, you know the number? Of, like, I was running green yellow Yamato, right? And, um, you know, for, for, for I think for a while when it first released, because I was pretty excited about the AA leader. And then, um, and then uh, yeah, it got to, and then I started playing it. Uh, and it got to a point whereby, you know, there were people telling me, like, look, you know, Mr. K, you have to run uh, Reject Amaru. And, and there were people at, like, for me, Daimonji, you know, who were showing me, like, look, you know, if you play this turn like this, you reject Amaru and kill, you know, lethal, 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 right? And I was like, you know, I was like, wow, this is this shit is getting too meta. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to move away. So I, for, for those of you watching, like, I watch very closely whenever Noah puts out his tier list. Right, because for me, I look at everything from C and below, and that's how I tell myself this is what I can play. Because I love playing shit here. Uh, it's amazing. The PTSD is it's it's like a drug, you know. I can never see myself playing a C tier deck, man. Why? It's so like you, you recently <laughs> see there's a search of people playing Rebecca, not Rebecca, Vivi in Japan. Ah. So ah, yes, the planning yes. of Sakazuki, uh, this is why we are seeing more newer decks appear mm. even corazon recently did a top eight in japan i think it's meme but there's still that potential corazon rebecca even coming back and even vivi which was previously really bad but is now somewhat playable mm. i think it's just the like oh sorry yeah. no, i think it's just because sakazuki's banned man like the, like the combo of reducing mm. and sending cuts to the bottom of the deck is too strong personally yeah yeah 100%. yeah I think no one mentioned before that it, uh, Sakazuki was the gatekeeper of every deck out there, every yeah. other leader yeah. that wasn't like the A tier. And now we are mm-hmm. like, it got me making like an OPO1 Luffy list again, like the red Luffy, uh-huh. just because like, oh, Sakazuki, mm-hmm. come on, I can, I can make this work, you know? So I'm like, I'm glad we are all, I, I was kind of scared that someone's going to be like, you know, it wasn't a good decision, but I think unanimously, because I know a lot of people, uh, maybe outside of Asia, were, were, weren't, weren't really happy with the decision. Um, of Sakazuki, I know certain content creators. I'll tell you why though, dude. I'll tell you why because they spend all their money on AAs and AAs are not cheap outside of Asia, man. That, that's true, that's true. <laughs> that is a Bandai problem that needs to be addressed. I feel for the people outside of the Japan release, you know? yeah. English and prices are pretty crazy, yeah. Prices? Oh my god. English prices in general are pretty crazy in my opinion. Like when I was in Australia and I was like asking people like how much their decks cost, they told me like just base rarity Sakazuki was going for like 800 AOD. I'm like what? Isn't this deck like? Oh, yeah, this deck is like two oh, two star decks. It's like two star decks and the just. Is to move to Singapore. Ah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, they were selling the starter decks for like seventy US. Yeah, it's pretty. I saw someone on Twitter bought it. I'm just like a starter deck shouldn't cost seventy dollars. Yeah, hopefully it's a Bandai gets to fix it. Yeah, I mean, it's called a starter deck for a reason, right? Like, you want to get people into the game, not get, <laughs> yeah. get, keep them like, no, don't play One Piece. <laughs> I know, right? Hang on, boys, we got a couple of comments in the chat. Uh, Casual Raccoon says, I like how Bandai explanation for banning Reject is basically them doing surprise Pikachu face. <laughs> um, and face. also goes on to say, 
in the English version, people are unhappy that the ban happens in 07 and not 06. Ah, okay. Well, yeah, they thoughts? don't share the same ban period, right? It was uh, it's a little bit later for English, if I'm not wrong. And mm. I don't know, they should just get on with having like a simultaneous release. Just yeah, right? Yeah. Let us be happy together. <laughs> but, yes. Yeah, I would actually is. agree with that. I think the simultaneous release would be great for the English side too. I mean, so that we can be like on equal level on a competitive standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like the recent worlds, man. Like, like we are, we are so looking forward to seeing like OBO six meta, but we have to go back to OBO five. And to me, that's a bit of a yeah, it's a bit sad, you know. Like we have to watch an old meta for old worlds. But yeah, that was um, a bit odd. <laughs> yeah, we just see like RHL on loop, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was like, guys, I thought we fixed this already, no? Okay. <laughs> they fixed it after the world. <laughs> right after yeah. they announced the winners. Uh, but right now, right, if you go to Google and you search for the One Piece TCG card game, right, it will, it will say something about new One Piece card game setting sale for simultaneous worldwide release. So I'm not ah, sure if this will be coming really? through. Really? Yeah, so yeah. Can I, can I, it was speculated that, it, that it's a... Um, it's, uh, what do you call it? Like it, it, uh, the English side and the Japanese side will be like joined together because of yeah. this announcement. But who knows? We only know yeah. when the news is released. I guess. I have a prediction well, that we'll have we'll know when they probably release 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 again. Like one or two years later, it's not gonna happen so soon. Really? Because oh, I long? saw that simultaneous release before I started making content for One Piece. Like oh, it was there right. at the start. So I, like, see, I, see. I don't see simultaneous see. release very often in like TCGs though. Like if a if a TCG has like an English counterpart and like a Jap like a Japanese uh Japanese version, usually like yeah. the Japanese version gets a hit of the like... English it's always like one or two sets mm -hmm. a hit, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean honestly for, for, the, <laughs> for the Pokemon TCG as well as the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, they have they haven't had a simultaneous release even though they've been ongoing for a long time. Yeah. Uh, the only other TCGs that did was I believe Digimon only recently, right? That was the only one that I know. Oh. Yeah, Fusion World is like one week, one week in between, like the Japanese and English release. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's not bad. Yeah. Oh, no. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope we get to be on the same like even battlefield. Yeah, that would be nice. I mean, I do. I, okay, I'll, I'll tell you guys straight up. I am sad. Okay, I am sad that Sakazuki is gone, and I'll tell you why. Um, I was dicking with Noel. I was telling him, like, dude, you know, he was, like, shilling his uh, Sakazuki set about how great it was. And I was like, bitch, you haven't seen mine yet, right? And um, I meant that as a complete meme, just because, like, I love Celestial Dragons, okay? I oh love playing Celestial God. Dragons. I have to go there, oh man. Okay? Like, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> like, you could put fat boys on the, on, the, on the board, you know? And, like, people are running it with Luchi and shit, right? But then, like, when you run it with Sakazuki, you suddenly get access to blue stuff, right? <laughs> And then, like, I could bottom deck with Hound Blaze, you know, Inogami Gurin with, like, a, I don't know, like, an 8 cost or 10 cost or whatnot, because, you know, you have fat boys on, on the floor. And it was absolutely hilarious that to the point where people at Casual were asking me, like, you know, to, they were forcing me to play the Celestial Dragons deck during the locals, right? <laughs> Just because it's, it's funny. I mean, it's pretty and, mean. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a shit deck, don't get me wrong, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, don't 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 you say that. Play anything else. You need to get people's yeah. hopes up. Celestial Dragon is good. Yeah, but try it out. It, you know, like now now I can't play it. I can't hit it with Rebecca because Rebecca can't attack. So what am I gonna hit it with, right? So <laughs> I have to go back to Luchi, or wait for the next you know blue black Sakazuki to come on. Hope you, you best believe I'll be doing it again. But you know, <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm I'm a wee bit sad that you know it's gone, but I think it's for the better. Right, I think honestly, like what Fabian was talking about, I think they need to do something about the Re Rebecca Hina Luchi thing. You know, that combo is just pretty wild. Yeah. I mean, that was more like commonplace in OPO five. In like OPO six, oh, it's Moria, Helmeppo, Luchi. Oh, I, I top out, top yeah, it yeah, off yeah. with an Ice Age. I yeah, just blow up your opponent's bot. Oh, I'm like putting like fifteen dawn worth of cuts on my bot. Yeah, pretty pretty fair, right? Pretty fair. Yeah, yeah we're wild. we're still gonna see that in OPO seven. Yeah. I'm, Excited, excited. Yeah. They shouldn't be so afraid to leader lock them. Like, if Big Mom can be leader lock too. Like, yeah, that's, some, that's something I wanted to touch on actually. Like, do you realize that most mm -hmm. most cards in One Piece are like just generic? There's not, there's, other than, yeah, other than 10 cards Big Mom, right? Almost everything yeah. else has like no no restriction to it. Not, I'm not like. Yeah, right? It has to leader lock 10 cards Mom, man. 
I mean, I'm, I mean, yes, yes, yes. For sure, for sure. But yeah, I, I think it seems like they're a little bit too afraid to step out of that like sort of comfort zone. Yeah, yeah like everything yeah. they've printed is like generic so far. Like every card that I've seen, like I think there are like very little exceptions. Like uh, I think the only exception I can think off the top of my head is like Spandam. Spandam is actually locked to a CP leader. It's like one of the first le- one of like the first searchers in the game to be locked better than a leader. Mm-hmm. That's oh, true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, and I think most of the yeah, Alabaster yeah, stuff as well. Alabaster, then. Oh. Yes. See, nobody oh, knows because nobody plays Vita. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey. <laughs> to, to be fair, to be fair, like, we did, like, this sort of, like, launch party during OPO4, and, like, I was tasked with playing Vivi. So I was just looking through, like, the whole red and blue card pool, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, this Alabaster thing in it. <laughs> I, I, I spent, like, a week figuring out how to make this work. And what I end up going with, I ended up playing like Animal Kingdom Pirates with wow. Vivi. <laughs> wow. No, no flavor at all. But I'm telling you, this Alabasta thing is not very good. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely looking forward to some, you know, a little bit more Alabasta love because, like, um, I first and foremost in Asia, the S the P sec. The parallel SEC VVs oh, are really, wow. really cheap. One of the nicest cards in the game. I know, right? Like, they're, they're, like when on release, it was like, Waipu was expensive, and it just crashed, right? Yeah. And and I remember I was just picking them up at a steal, and I was like, you know what, guys? This is going in my black and red Sabo deck. You know what I mean? <laughs> VV into Shanks, 10 cost bomb, you know? Um, and, and I think, like, that that's pretty fun. You know, or like Sabo, right? You know, Sabo bombs two things up to, the, what, 4,000 power? Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... Um, and then with Vivi on the board at seven cost, right? Rush. You can, turn, you can swing. So you just follow up Vivi with whatever big boy you have, and then you just keep hitting, right? The only problem with that is, so it's really hard to get Vivi to stick because the moment she drops down, right, she's getting cleared. You know what I mean? So she gives people a rush, right? So Yeah, yeah. It's like so a... Th- I would really love to see more Alabaster uh, love, to be honest. Like, it's a good arc, so... I actually feel like that's something they can explore in like uh like their extra boosters. Like you know how Digimon does their like sort of like their side sets, like the subsets. Mm-hmm. They actually like sub- gives like very solid support to like the like the old decks. And I think it's always pretty cool mm-hmm. because like suddenly like these old decks come back into relevancy just based on like oh, so, yeah. For yeah. like EV one, but yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not that good, I guess, to make the decks meta. Oh, oh come it on could be that our current decks are too strong. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's the latter. latter. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the current decks is just way too strong. I mean, like, I was, um, I can't remember who was talking about, was it or something? Like, I was ex- super excited to play Odin, you know, green, red Odin, mm. a red, green Odin, yeah. Because suddenly you could use your Otamas together, you know? You have the Otama searcher and you got the minus cost one together, you know? <laughs> and, um, you know, it was like a first time thing, you know? Like, I couldn't use red Otama in, say, the Yamato deck, right? But then all of a sudden you could, you know, probably play Wano, like, you could run Pokey, you know, as a blocker. Um, you could do so many new things. Um, so, yeah, I totally agree with Jianhui that, yes, you know, EBO1 fulfilled that role of, you know, providing more support to all the cards. So, like, your Denjiro started coming back out, right? Um, and then that was interesting, but, you know, the meta was just too too damn strong. And just, you know, people just, you know, yeah, it's fun to build, but, yeah, you know, it's not going to make it. Yeah. Perhaps another leader, I think, mm, could be a problem for the future is actually NL. Mm. I think NL mm. could be a problem. Say it louder for the people in chat. It is <laughs> NL, guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We kind of fixed already because of the reject ban, but I think NL, and if, mm. if there were to be generic yellow cards that are good in the future, they would just throw it into the NL deck to upgrade it. That's how I view it. Yeah. That's actually oh, no. yellow. Ye- that's actually yellow in a nutshell, you know? Like, I was talking to them about a li- like in the previous podcast, like, yellow just gets like patch notes every every set. Like yeah, yeah. Literally, literally every set they just get like like small patch notes. Actually, oh, and you know like one of my uh my three three on three teammate from Malaysia, Raven. You know how he builds his decks, like his yellow decks. He just goes uh, like yes, yeah. He just uh, he just picks out like the like the best like the two best cards from the new set. So like so he is like pretty funny. So like in OPO three, he told me okay this kata deck okay it is like fifty cards pretty fixed right like a kata deck in OPO three. Okay, then in OPO4, we got a new 2k counter, we got a new, we got a new Sun, like, trigger character, we got Sanji. So, 8 cards. Mm. So, we just take out, like, the bad 2k counters, we take out, like, maybe the bad triggers, and then we put in 8 mm. cards. 
yeah. Then come and get in roll. Then that that's done. That's color curry and OPO four. <laughs> then in OPO five we got Gadatsu. Then we just take out like maybe we take out four cards. Then we put in Gadatsu. That's color curry solved. Yeah. Oh beige 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 and OPO four as well. Yeah, so it's like every set they get these like small patch notes, you know. It's pretty funny, like how yeah. he, like he just tells me that, oh, every set I just put in four cards and my deck is done, perfect, hundred percent, best deck list. <laughs> yeah, that's like yellow, I yeah. think, like cause every set they get like these small upgrades, like utility upgrades. I mean, in OPO seven mm-hmm. it gets a, bit, a little bit out of hand, like what? And now just now they have like this ten cost rush character that gains them life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's the OPO7 meta game actually. It's NL running rampant everywhere. That's another, another topic yeah. we can touch on actually, like NL. Yes, I think I do think NL might be the next problem because now that Sakazuki is gone, right? NL actually, like back in OPO5, like people are asking me what do I feel about NL. I'm like telling them, I think NL is like the hard gatekeeper of the format. format. Like before, even before uh, Saka, like Sakaluchi was discovered, like the mm-hmm. Irish L loop and all, right? Uh, like, we, we over at uh, Sea King, we were just saying that like the top decks, I think, are uh, going to be Law, uh, Law, uh, Purple Luffy, then NL. Then we f- all feel that NL is the hard gatekeeper, well, gatekeeper of the format because this single deck just gatekeeps every aggro deck in the format. Mm, yeah, yeah. Like, I remember we had this conversation actually, yeah. Uh, it was at that... Um, you know that, that shop that's also a skate shop, what's that called? Hey, that, that was where I played my flagship today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that one. That one. I remember we were there, I was collecting a card from Sky, and I remember you were telling me about that. Yeah, and Anel is a very strong key keeper, I totally agree. Um, and on the point of, you know, yellow, uh, Tianhui's point on, like, yellow always receiving all these generic upgrades, right? And then, you know, it's just swap in, swap out, you know? Um, I kind of fell into that little little rabbit hole as well when I was doing my Yamato deck as well. Um, so that's what made me, you know, go pick up four of those Sanjis, which the boys helped at SFT helped me um, do. And really, it's just like, oh, you know, what can I swap in? And it's insane, you know. Like, uh, so I agree, I do agree with Jianhui um, that you know at some point we have to start leader locking for yellow because it's just too strong. Now, especially now that the king is gone, right? You know. I mean, looking at this NL thing right now, I I look at the Ace card in. In the NL deck, what relevance does Ace have with NL in the whole anime? <laughs> no, we're not doing like this. That's true though, yeah, that's true. No, not lore it's specific. Bad, right? I mean, does it make sense for Gekko Mora to be calling Marines from the grave? Uh, yeah, that's true, that's true, okay, fine. Mora? Uh, maybe something, maybe leader locking is an option in the future. I mean, a, a good suggestion. It should, yeah, that's a good suggestion. Mm-hmm. So, I think one well, something Can that... Yeah. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, you were th- you were saying something about yellow getting patch notes every set, right? Um, as a for red players, right, they haven't been getting any new <laughs> good cards. I think they've oh. been dead. Oh, yeah, my, my friend four. Noel is actually very very sad because uh, <laughs> all the previous red leaders that were released were pretty bad. I would say pretty pretty bad. Bro, mm-hmm. every set he tells us red will be back. Dragon, Never. dragon, let's go! Like in Opio's yeah. the most relevant card was 8 cost dragon. I think that's about it. And it, yeah, it doesn't really like boost the overall color itself. Yeah, I think. One, killer, one, yes, that's true. Maybe, maybe like a new, yeah. maybe like a new develop, developer team took over. Like previously it was love to red, then now it's love to yellow. Love to yellow. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> maybe, maybe. No, I think, but can we just take a second, point. right? I mean, I mean, can we just take a second? Like, what happened to Dragon? You know what I mean? Like, before the set dropped, right? People were hyping up Dragon, like, oh my god, you know, there's two dons here and two dons there and two dons everywhere. Shit, you know? Rush and Crush is back, baby. You know, like, that was all the rage, you know? And then and then it just disappeared. And then next thing I knew, I look at no one's list and it was like, shit, tear out of wow. You know, like, what happened to Dragon? I think the deck just couldn't contest with the, the rest of the meta decks. Like, you know, mm. like, like black, you know, the removal is too strong. Like red, you 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 get you get a bunch of rush characters, but ultimately at the end you get outvalued by like Moria's or like Enel's constantly healing from one line. There's nothing much you can do. Just slowly grind your they they just slowly grind grind their way to victory. Or if you're faced against right. an RP law, they just rush you down with like mm. multiple minions on board. Yeah. So I think the deck is fine. I mean, if you release this dragon deck in like OP one, OP two, it would definitely be a tier one deck. But yeah, it will be yeah. 05, it will be 06, I think it's just not good enough, man. Mm. Yeah, 
point. And to your point earlier, right, uh, Jinhui, um, Kazura Kun is in the chat saying that the last good card for Red was in EBO 1 Kid Killer. Oh, that card's amazing. Killer. Yeah, That's hands down, amazing. right? Every RP law deck needs this shit. You know? <laughs> Even the Zoros. I mean, there are some Zoros in Japan right now that are, that are, that are, that are back because of this uh, uh, Kid Killer. It's freaking amazing. I love it. Because I, I was a red player too. I love our red green law. I love Zoro. And yeah, the, uh, immediately slapped the card into my RP law deck. And I think RP law is a, a tier. It's considered a tier A deck now. So, I mean, if you wa really love red, I think the, the, the best alternative you have right now is RP law. In all seven, for agree. sure. Agree with that, yeah. So Noah, what are you running now? Like, what what's your main deck right now? I've been messing a lot with Boar and Gop for, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. <laughs> but I'm yeah, also yeah. messing around with Green Uta. I think Green Uta has potential in this format. It's really mm -hmm. stable, has lots of hand cut, ability to spam the board. So I think it's a it's not a tier one deck for sure, probably somewhere around tier two. And Hancock might be a potential for an anti-meta deck. I think it has really good key cards, especially against Anno. We see that um, four cost pudding has been seeing a lot of play. Mm -hmm. So I think Hancock is also one of the deck to keep a lookout for. Pudding is a very strong card in the meta game right now. I have to agree with that. That's another thing I wanted to touch on. Like you know how I said that NL, like NL is gonna be a problem. How do you know how like how do you know that something is a problem? when they keep printing cards to like sort of keep something in check. So like NL, mm -hmm. what keeps NL in check? Alright, so we have cards like, uh, let's say your blocker law, the guy that discards two cards when your opponent has like seven cards in hand. And you know NL is like a deck that likes to hoard cards in their hand. Yeah, when they're like printing these cards, I mean, it's pretty obvious that something is a problem, right? Like, if not, why would you be printing these cards? Like to sort of like check something mm -hmm. in a meta game. So cards like pudding, cards like uh, blocker law, I think all these serves as like checks to NL just because of like how they like the hot cards in their hand and you just slam this pudding down and like all your cards just go bye bye i think it's fine mm -hmm. for them to be printing such cards but, uh, but i think just the problem with nl is just that it neutralizes like aggro decks because if you're playing aggro deck you, you face into nl i mean you're just looking yeah just looking auto, at the auto lose. And just, oh i can't win i can't win then i have to be really lucky or my opponent needs to be really unlucky uh, so mm, yeah, probably. Can, can we expand on that a little bit? Like, how does, how does Anel, like from a mechanic standpoint, right? How does Anel end up nullifying these, um, these rush decks? Resilience, okay. I think that's the first and foremost. It does leader lock. No, they can leader lock you. That's the most important thing. They uh, they they deprive you of resources. Then mm -hmm. they 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 have the 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 constant uh one life recycle thing. They 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 just only die. Then in the late game, they just spam Yamatos, man. Yeah. Mm, I mean, that's, that's their win condition. They just spam Yamatos, so get a bunch of like Yamatos from board, aces, clear your board, then go for one shot of uh, um, uh, like 9k attacks with a very mm. strong white board, and that's how they win against aggro decks. They just can't do anything mm. about it. Mainly, it like just getting that past that one life. Like, uh, like anyone one life is like an illusion, you know? Like, that's actually. Like three life in a sense, just because firstly you need to like you need to get that get you need to connect that first hit to get that one life to proc their leader ability, which gives them another life. And they need to now take that second life, and you still need to have another attack to go for game. So yeah, it's yeah. like it, I mean that's 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 why I feel that uh like gate keeps aggro decks just because like you have to stick a board of like at least three cards like three including your leader like three cards every turn to even try to attempt to go for game. And if you go for game and next turn they can just clear whatever's on your board, suddenly now you're back to square one and top it off with the fact that they maybe they just gain a life, zero to one or like one to two. Yeah, how how are Ego decks ever gonna close that gap? You get what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, and uh, just because this is going on YouTube, so I just wanted to, you know, put it out there so that, you know, people listening in, you know, at least they, they understand when the brainchild that is Yen Wei, you know, when he drops a uh, a lot of flavor on the table like that, like, you know, so, so that they hear a little bit more about it, you know. Cool. All right, so I think we something we want to touch on may, might be like, what leaders are we expecting to come out from like this match, like fresh meta game with Saka Ben, right? So, I was saying like, Pilofi, I think Pilofi is back. 
I saw two today. Yeah. Dude, I saw Purple. Oh, yeah. No, I want to tell you guys this um, earlier when Jeremy mentioned Purple Luffy. Uh, I saw Purple Luffy running Magellan's. Like, today. Good. Like, when I was at Locals, you know? And, like, the whole Magellan thing is back. Um, throwing people off their power curves and all that good shit. Um, uh, so, yeah, yeah, I think Purple Luffy, too. I mean, the reason why. Event card? Maybe one. I forgot Go, the name. Okama way? Is the one that redirects? Okay. The KO8 cost. Oh, Ragnarok, Ragnarok. Ragnarok, yeah. Some lists I saw, like, they do play that. Kind of like. Against Ace, though, like, the 10, the 10 cost Ace doesn't do anything, but. I still like Purple Luffy. I, I was kind of glad it's making it way back, because that's what I played in OP05. Like, I didn't dismantle the deck till now, so. Yeah, Papa, Lu- Papa Luffy was previously being kicked by Sakazuki because of the, <laughs> the, uh, mm. the bottom deck abilities. Yeah, like uh, Sanzen Sakai. Homeblaze, Homeblaze. Homeblaze, yeah. So, so your Megalon uh, totally neutralized by, by these events, man. Yeah. Mm. Sure. And I think another deck that is coming back to the meta is actually Reiju. Oh, because yes. Re- oh, yes. Reiju has the ability to run uh, Pudding, and I think it's really good into NL because of this pulling mm-hmm. card. Yeah. Um, the only problem I, I foresee that, like, uh, the only deck I think it, it will have a problem against is probably RP Law. RP Law, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Because of its uh, constant ability to, uh, to have a lesser dawn than the Reju. Yeah, they just make like all your... What's uh, the thing about the Reju deck is all your characters, they need you to either have equal or lesser dawn than your opponent. So like, when you can't achieve this condition, right, all your cards actually do nothing. <laughs> And it's not nice. It's not a nice feeling to have. Oh, that's, that's true, yeah? Yeah. Oh, shit. That's why like, it's sort of like a bad matchup for the Reiju deck. Yeah, like the worst matchup in the metagame, I feel, is like RP Law. And RP Law is like pretty popular in the sense that I think everyone is like a filthy red player. <laughs> like in, in Singapore, everyone <laughs> everyone has got their hands on like a flavor of red before. And they're, like, if they're still addicted yeah. to that feeling, right? Like, I guess like RP Law is like a good transit. It's like a nice transition for them. You know, it's a really yeah, good feeling like when you're playing control decks all the way and suddenly an arrow deck comes in there's meta and you can finally play it. Wow, the feeling is great, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. I, 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 I love RP Law, man. I mean, like, the feeling that I could bottom deck something with the leader ability and all of a sudden, you know, okay, I, I, don't, I don't know if you guys do this too, right? But I played blue, I played black, I played blue and black, I've played a lot of removal shit, right? I even gone so far as to go down the route of red removal, you know? Remember back in the old days whereby you minus 2,000 power and then you pop something with Jet Pistol? Remember those days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I was waiting for them to print more stuff around that, you know? And of course, you know, we didn't get a lot. I mean, we got Sabo, maybe we got a new Fire Fist, all that kind of thing. Reducing power always feels like a chore, whereas like, reducing costs always felt a lot easier for some reason. Or just straight up, you know popping, I mean? straight up popping stuff, dude. Correct. It's like, you know, it was always a struggle, right? It's like, oh my god, it's like 10,000 power. Let me minus two here, minus three there. And before you know, you're out of resources. You know what I mean? Um, but I think when RP Law came out, like, I really liked it. A, because, you know, background. And then uh, B, it was also because, like, all of a sudden, the whole grind to reduce power and remove something became so much easier. You know? That's like, like an actual reward. Invest... Yeah, there's like a reward right, attached a to aggressive it. aggressive removal deck, you know? And and I think from that standpoint, I, th- I think it's great. Uh, I don't think it's going to become another Sakazuki, to be completely honest, because you can run out of steam really quickly with RP Law if, you know, get out of check. But uh, but yeah, I think I think that's a really good uh, good deck uh, moving forward. As a long-time blue crocodile player, I've always thought that Great Purple Law is a better blue crocodile. And mm. also, since we're on the topic of KOing stuff, right, I've, uh, what do you guys think that um, the new Rock Luchi, is that is that leader going to be the new Sakazuki leader? I saw three of them today. <laughs> I mean, this Rock yeah, Luchi leader is, like, what, is the leader that I'm uh, piloting in 07 right now. And it's different from Sakazuki mm. for sure, because Sakazuki has the ability to cycle cards at every turn. That is the main reason why Sakazuki is so good. Rock Luchi is mm. kind of like a nerf Sakazuki, and, um, but the playstyle is around the same. I mean, Black Deck's playstyle around the same. Uh, I guess the only difference is you play your grave a lot more. Yeah. Mm. You play your grave a lot more. It's sort of like a morale leader. Yeah, it's like a nice mix, like, right? Mix yeah, of, it's a mix, yeah. it's a mix. It feels like a mix to me, yeah. 
it's not like super broken because of the drop draw ability, uh, without the drop draw ability, but it's also not like uh, super bad because um, it's a mixture of Moria and Sakazuki, I would say. So pretty fun black deck to play the current OP Sun meta. Mm. I saw like a few, like Ace is coming back slightly. Like there's yes. a lot of great tools for red. That, I mean like the tank cost Shanks deals with Ace, like uh, with the secret red Ace. <laughs> quite cleanly, I mean, you you gotta get there. A specifically because of the event removal, like what you said, the Kazume, like the mm. minus power, KO with big events. It, I think there is the version that's gonna be kind of decent as a, like an anti, uh, anti-meta type thing, similar to like more Hancock. Um, depending on what it faces, I think it's gonna do a good job. But overall, yeah, there's still a lot of room to grow for red deck specifically. Ace plays it very differently. It's not an aggro-based deck. It's a little bit more controlly. But yeah, we gotta bring more, like, outside of Red Pop a lot more aggro stuff. But I wanna kind of represent for my, my green, for the green color right here. I, I love me bo- I love me some Bonnie. Bonnie's like... Hey, Bonnie's, Bonnie's been good, good, hasn't it? Ah, that's right. It's a one-track deck, but I love it, man. <laughs> <laughs> but there is different versions, like, of course, you got the Corazon build, you got the 9 cost Zoro, mm. uh, the mm. 8 cost Kate is back, and then, of course, topping off with the 10 cost Dofi, but... I, that's just something about Bonnie, man. Like, being able to just kind of be annoying to your opponent and just locking <laughs> down attacks. I, I think yeah. so that's that's been my main for this set for PO7. And uh, yeah, I've just been enjoying it. Fabian, what do you think of Bonnie man? I think Bonnie introduced like a new sort of like new mechanic to the game, which is like counter play. Which is like something some card games have where like you're able to do things on your opponent's turn. So like Bonnie just comes attached with this ability to like activate whenever your opponent just swings at you. Just rest one card. So it's like activate my trap card yeah yeah right right yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, so i was just about to say so you know, <laughs> yeah it's like a pretty reactive kind of leader so <laughs> having this attached to but the issue is i feel for bonnie right is that it's attached to like green the pro i think green hasn't had like it's spot like in a very long time just because of mm-hmm. there's like so much the okay the issue with green is that you're playing like one card a turn most of the time mm-hmm. and then your mm-hmm. opponent but in the current meta game right your opponent is playing one card, but their one card might be just blowing up your one card. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're right, right. right. The one card brings four cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, in, in Moria's, if it's like a Moria, right? Yeah, something like that. But yeah, it's like, it's, it's not like a fair trade, in my opinion, because true, true. I'm spending my whole time to develop like one card on the board, but you just go, I play one card, blow up your card. So like, you just effectively burn my turn away while you play your turn. So I think that's something like Green has an issue with, which is like, the moment they lose the initiative, right? Like, they lose... Like, the moment my opponent takes over the board, I can't really come back into the game. Because now, next yeah. turn, let's say, I slam down another big body. It's just gonna get blown up again. <laughs> mm. That's me versus Noah's Boa. Every single time. It's like, oh, play this, bottom deck. Play this, bottom deck. Yeah, bottom yeah okay. Green just struggles with removal in general, I feel. But I think they're taking a step in, like, a good direction with this Basil Hopkins SR card. It's, it, gives, it, it gave them sort of, like, a sticky minion for once. I mean... Yeah. I think this design was like previously implemented in like uh, OPO2, like Oden. I think that was like pretty nice design. Like it helps solve one of like the green issues in like if my big body gets removed, at least Oden can like cheat out an Okiku, right? Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. So like for this Hawkin card, it gives them like a sort of stick like sticky minion, which was reminiscent of like Oden in the past. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but I think how many basal Hawkins are you running, Ashraf? I mean the number number cannot be less than four. You know, it used to be like two. I keep adding it because of Boa. Because I keep playing against yeah. Noah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sick of it. I'm going to just put four. Deal with it then. Yeah, and Hawkins yeah. is really good now after the Sakazuki ban. Because like, uh, mm. like the main identity of Sakazuki in the past was that their removal isn't really necessarily attached to their characters. It's actually attached to like their events. So like Houndblaze yeah. and like the Murakumo card. So like with Hawkins, right? Now that most like removal is attached to characters, it means that when my opponent mm-hmm. wants to blow up my board, they have to be playing characters. And when there are characters on the board, Hawkins can just use them as fodder to like save himself. Yeah. I so I think that. yeah. So I think because of that, this card comes more into relevancy. Because in the past, like when in when OPO seven just came out, this Basil Hawkins card, when we when you played against the Saka deck, oh they would just, just swing with their whole board, like even if it doesn't hit, you just swing with their whole board and then they just go home blaze. And then there goes your Hawkins and you can't really do anything about it because they have nothing on the board for you to rest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Hawkins does need to... You need to rest something with Hawkins to let it, like, stay on the board. If you can't... If there's no target for you to rest, it just... Yeah, the effect is nullified. Mm. 
Mm, it's just a blocker. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just yeah, it's just there. Six cost character. <laughs> I play during I play and it just goes to the bottom of my deck. <laughs> yeah, fun yeah. fun times, fun times. Awesome. But yeah, I think Bonnie is like pretty pretty like uh nice because it introduces like this new mechanic to the game. Though yeah, as I said, it's a green leader. It's so green. yeah, it's green. <laughs> green hasn't really got like. <laughs> I think it's just some issue that they can't really solve. Because if you if you did solve it, then I think green becomes a problem. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But to be honest, right, like, I went up against a, was it Corona? No, sorry, a Bonnie. And honestly, that ability to, you know, like, on your turn, um, rest something, right? Um, no, no, wait, was that Perona or Bonnie? No, sorry, Perona. Per per sorry, Perona, green, black, Perona. Uh, on her turn, she gets to rest something. Four costs, um, yeah. Four costs and under, right? Yeah, like, wow, that was really annoying. Especially, like, post Sakazuki, right? Like, I think it was Mickey who was, he's currently testing it and experimenting with it. Um, whereby he's trying to build like a Sakazuki removal deck, but then it's green and black instead of blue and black kind of thing. Um, so it was, it was a lot of rest and pop, rest and pop, right? Um, so, so yeah, I, I guess Perona has some potential, but definitely not nowhere as efficient as, you know, uh, Sakazuki in the past. Um, but yeah, I think Bonnie is a very, very strong contender for, for this meta. But what do you guys think, man? I mean, like, there are a lot of le other leaders out there, you know? Uh, take, for instance, there's Foxy, which is the total troll deck. You know, there's Vegapunk. Dreams. Oh, I know, man. right? Can, Can I, I ask the pros, what, what do you think about Vegapunk? Like, yeah, absolutely. Vegapunk. Shite. Shite. I have one... I, I can't make it work. We have one friend in our group. <laughs> We had one friend in our group that was so hyped about playing Vegapunk. I tell you, he was he played like one tournament with it, and he said this deck is consistent, consistent in one thing, going X five. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Oh, man. But, okay, can I, can I ask the question like why? Why is it shit? Mm, I think it's mainly be it's mainly because like just being a leader that can't attack. Yeah, I think that's like one thing that like leaders in the past struggle with, like Rebecca. I mean, Rebecca was good back then because they had this stage card to like compensate for the fact that their leader can't swing. Like, so they give their character pseudo rush. So that kind of compensates for that. But Vivi compensates for that by giving, yeah, same thing, right? Give their characters rush. But rush, Vegapunk, yeah. the, the Vegapunk doesn't really do that. <laughs> Vegapunk is just, like, mm -hmm. I get to play like uh, bodies on the board. Like for, like or sort heal, of, right? yeah, or, or heal them for free. But the issue with this is that you're on a two life leader. <laughs> you're like the moment you flip open your leader, you're like already on the floor. <laughs> two, yeah. yeah, it's like or like compared to like a typical mono color leader with just four five life, you're technically starting the game with like three cuts less. And all you're mm -hmm. doing is like just you're trading that advantage to be able to like cheat out five cost characters as early as turn one. But the thing is you're only able to like do this once every turn. So it's not really you can't really like blow your opponent out of the game by like going Turn one, I, I call out like two five cost characters. You're only playing one. And mm. because your leader can't swing, that's another another pressure point you're losing out on. So like the only character the only attack pressure you have are the characters on your board. So when you swing with the characters on your board, that means your opponent will just swing back at them. Yeah. 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 It's just like you, yeah. You're just burning through resources just like, Yeah, yeah. Keep, right? And you're on a two life leader. So like you're already starting the game with like minus three in a sense. That's yeah. So true. And like the top end of think? Vegapunk, some people play like, you know, the Ace, some people play like the Yamato, Katakuri. Mm. At that point, you might as well just play it. Yeah, right. Yes, you can change <laughs> out early, but it's not Exactly. Working. Exactly. And that was the best leader in for yellow <laughs> as of the moment. Best yellow okay. leader. Can, can I, I ask a very unpopular question? Yep. Can I ask a very unpopular it's question? Okay. So is Z really the best NL player in Singapore? Because <laughs> every time I film, okay, every time I go down to film you boys at the championships, you know what I mean? That's exactly what I hear from him, right? That hey, Mr. K, what? The best NL leader. Uh, best NL player in Singapore. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Props to Z. He has been consistently topping for every uh, championship in Singapore. By, by mm. topping, I would say um, he gets to do top cut consistently. Okay. Mm. I don't know whether... <clears throat> but the thing is in flagships recently, he has been going zero two with his NL. Really? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fabian, you're right. Uh, you have been witnessing this too, right? Not the only one. That I mean, I haven't seen this person a while for for a while, in my opinion. <laughs> but, I mean, but Zed is a very funny guy. I mean, we are all friends. We are all friends. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the thing is, um, subjective, subjective. But but it's what gives his brand flavor. You get what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. He has, brand. yeah, yeah, it's his brand, right? Like he's the best at everything. Best <laughs> NL, best Moria, best, best. Uh, yeah, he used to be best Mora before he was best at now. <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. I, I really love his dedication to it. You know what I mean? Like, like if there was anyone who would personify that gatekeeping, right? Like, if I would imagine a physical gate and someone at the gate, that would be Zen. You know what I mean? Um, and, uh, and 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 yeah, you know, it it really got me thinking. Like, wow, you know, that over all this time, you know, Zed is still playing NL, and and he you know, at least at championships, right? Like, he's always going for top cut. So, I mean, he's doing well with it. You know, that tells you a lot of, also about the NL deck. You know, first you put a good pilot in in the seat, right? And and then you, you get him to run this very consistent deck. I think it tells you a lot, you know, about the kind of deck that NL is, you know? Um, one thing I noticed at Daimonji is that um, we've had a couple of new players come through and the first thing you hear from them is, hi, you know? I would like to buy a deck. And I was like, oh, would you like... Uh, I, I, by the way, I don't work there. I just jump in and mess around for fun, okay? <laughs> um, when the owner is out at, at the toilet or whatever, you know, I, I just sit at the store and pretend to be a shop owner. And um, and so I get... like I, I had a couple of these requests, you know? Like, people come in and they're like, hi, I'd like to buy a deck. And I was like, oh, sweet. You know, which starter deck would you like to get, you know? And they're like, oh, no, I want an Enel deck. I'm like, oh, shit, where am I going to find that for you? You know what I mean? <laughs> And, and yeah, you know, guys, there, there are people that, okay, there are, A, there are people who are straight up wanting to buy decks, I think that you guys are all very familiar with, but more importantly is, at least in out here in the West, um, I've been seeing a lot of requests to buy specifically yellow decks. It's either Katakuri or NL, you know, and it's always the new players, meaning to say that, like, when the new players come to the game, you know, they see all the riffraff between all the different colors, and their end conclusion is, I think I should start with yellow because that gives me mm-hmm. the best fighting possibilities. You know what I mean? Uh, um, I would say back, say, OPO one, OPO two. Mm. Mm. Okay, I would say the reason. <clears throat> sorry, the reason why they want to start with yellow decks is because yellow decks are, I would say, the easiest to pilot for beginners. Mm. It's like Katakuri. Mm. There's not much thinking. Um, you just you just play on curve, right? Get up to, uh peril into get up two into seven mum into seven mum then you slam ten mum. I think it's the most straightforward gameplay. I mean yellow decks for sure. I mean NL NL you can argue that it's a bit more uh there, there's a lot more thought process to go through regarding like life management and stuff. Like uh whether to 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 guard at this specific timing or just take the take a life and go to zero and and and, and slam down a big drop next turn. I mean but mm. compared to like black decks or even like blue decks blue decks right or like uh rg red green law for example if, if a total be- beginner comes into the uh to the card game scene and wants to start with red green law there's there's i don't think it's a very good starting point for them because the deck is like too complicated for a beginner i would say so um, yellow decks best for beginners i would say yeah and like when people ask me what they want to run for their regionals then i'll just ask them are you comfortable with like the black decks if you're not look towards yellow katakuri like why it's I mean it's just consistent game plan. Especially I think in OPO six, the get the deck is actually super consistent. Like you just go just play your curve and then when you stand on your ten mom next thing you just go reject Amaru and just go for game. Yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward yeah. game plan. Yeah. And in general, I think for Karakuri, not as many lines of play compared like compared to like other decks in the meta game. Like compared to uh, black Saka, like Sakazuki, you're thinking about every every turn you have to make the decision. What am I discarding? So that's like a pretty Difficult decision in its own already because like what if you discard the wrong card and it just comes back to bite you later on? Then like Moria you have to like manage your your like uh your trash. Then uh and now you have to have like good fundamentals. You need to know like when it's good to just not attack, when when it's good to just like even you don't just swing with like whatever big drop you play down on the next turn, you know, because next turn what what if your opponent just swings into it and it dies? Yeah, but so sometimes you it might be better to just like keep two active characters on the board and like sort of force your opponent to swing your life. Then you can get to use your leader ability to refresh like refresh your life, cycle through cards. Like uh, you get what I mean? Like, like so many more decisions to make as you're playing other decks compared to like Katakuri. Katakuri is just I'm gonna put my opponent down to zero and I'm just gonna close the game. <laughs> or and I'm gonna get lucky off my triggers if I wanna survive. So I guess that's probably why you I, I think uh like yellow decks are like more popular for like uh, beginners and it's something that we actually have we 
advocate for as well. Like if you're new to the game and you want to get like started in like the competitive side of things, kind of yeah, just play like yellow, just play a yellow deck. Like back then, yeah. back then it was a white beard because back uh, white beard was like pretty. Aside from like uh knowing how much to counter, doing quick math, like the deck is also like similar to color query right now. Is that you just pretty play linear? Just, yeah. yeah, it's pretty linear. Just play yeah. on curve. Yeah, so I think that's probably why like beginner friendly decks that are consistent and powerful. So that's probably mm-hmm. why people get into it. But damn, the cost of a yellow color curry deck in English is. It's wild. It's, it's wild. Wow. Like, there was this uh, American player that came over to Singapore. And then he. I think he was on exchange, like, a, like on an exchange program. So he was at Daimonji trying to pick up, like, um, he's, like, like, Japanese cards so that he could put together a deck, right? And f- when, I, when I met with him, you know, the first thing he told me was, oh my god, you guys have it so good here. You know, I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, do you know how much my Katakuri deck costs? I'm like, okay, okay, come here, come down, come down. Okay, it's not to be you, but I'm sorry. <laughs> like, um, That's crazy. You know, and, but it, it, it is truly a problem, honestly. Um, yeah, no, but it's crazy when you think about it, you know. Yeah, it costs uh, Secret Rite Katakuri. It's still holding on like $40, $50 each. Until now, mm. like, what, what, three sets over, like, they just got it open to six. Right? Yeah. They got to fix the supply problem. Okay, so I'm, 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 I'm just gonna say that I'm, I'm just gonna go with a very unpopular thing to say because you know, Fabian, I love saying I'm talking about unpopular shit. So I was talking to my friend in the US, okay, and he was thinking he's been long thinking about getting the One Piece. I've been, you know, sending him pictures of you know all the crazy, amazing shit that's going down over here in Asia, right? Uh, he's Asian too, but he's based in in the states, and um, and he 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 noticed one thing. He was like, when One Piece in the States dropped, right, the first and most popular deck was Zoro. The second most popular deck was Whitebeard. And then the third most popular deck was uh, Katakuri. So, based on what I've been hearing, right, what, what, what would you guys think in terms of, like, very popular decks out in the English format are uh, the most linear ones? Uh, I don't necessarily do you think that's the same case in Asia. I don't necessarily think Zoro is very linear. Like I think it's one of the more complicated mm-hmm. decks to pilot in the One Piece card game. Just because like a deck like Zoro with so many like options, also like uh knowing how to use your dons to attack and mm-hmm. yeah, like how to maintain your board as well. Because you can't just go swing with your board when your your cards are like so small. <laughs> like you are, you have like three K power characters, all your opponent needs to do is just swing their leader at it and it just dies. It's not worth protecting it. Yeah, yeah so you need okay, to know how to popular opinion. People that don't know how to play Zoro say Zoro is linear. <laughs> yeah. No, I totally agree. I totally agree. I, I think Zoro is popular because it's, it's just Zoro, honestly. <laughs> yeah. But like because, for... I, and, yeah. and one of the reasons why I say this, right? Sorry to jump in, but like, I, I totally agree with Tian Wei, you know what I mean? Like, when my friend in the state was telling me that Zoro is a linear deck, I was like, hang on a second. Like, I filmed, you know, like, camera crew for Noel watching him pilot Zoro. And that was the wildest, craziest shit I've ever seen. Like, there is no way, you know, this deck is simple, right? And then when I asked my friend, like, okay, so why do you think Zoro is a linear deck, right? And he was like, oh, you know, you plus 1k everywhere, and you just rush, 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 right? And I was like, Tian Wei's absolutely right, you know? Zoro is seen as a linear deck because, you know, it's... If you look at it from a very one-dimensional perspective, then, then yeah, you know, just sit everything out and rush, you know? But... But yeah, um, just any initial thoughts on on uh, you know the 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 the, the, in, the English format um, and following you know the white bit was it the white bit ban in the in, in the states? Yeah, yeah, was that before, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, it's just uh, it's just something my friend mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So the, the true question is: right, Do you guys think that both should be unbanned? <laughs> Both? Nah, but nah, nah, nah. I don't want to go back to wipe your net out of here. Oh my god. Okay, good to know. Good to know. So we don't need both in this, uh, this part. As, as you know, if, you, if you need a boat to play with, there's always Noah's up, okay? <laughs> uh, oh, sure, go ahead. Noah's up. <laughs> what, what do you all think, like comparing a uh, full power white beard to Sakazuki? White beard, oh, that's, that's a more broken. question. White beard, yeah. the most broken shit ever. Yeah, definitely full, full white beard, more broken. Yeah. I think so. Mm. It's just the, the high uh, attack power. It's it's like Sakosuki, yes, I can clear the entire board by sequence things properly, properly but why they just like... Okay, seven, yeah, just, nine, just turn off brain, right? Turn off brain, bang, yeah, bang, bang. bang. 
Yeah, my Diamond Jozu is coming down and swinging for 7k. <laughs> my Ezo is 7k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it took like Sakazuki three sets to get hit. White Boat got hit in like one set. So, yeah. uh, that's, that's true. true. Yeah, that's true. true. Yeah. Numbers speak for themselves. Never ever bring back White Boat. Man. Maybe we can have like a goat, goat format, right? <laughs> Gold Ooh, format, cool. full power, full, full band format, <laughs> full power, full power white versus... Yeah, 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 full power oh, Nami shit. as well. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be interesting to watch actually. That's content yeah. idea right there. Full power yeah. Nami, like how does it? Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, let's let's do that sometime. <laughs> Maybe we can try among like the Civil King members. We do full power, full power boat beard oh, versus yeah, yeah versus Sakazuki. Okay. Casual Raccoon is saying that in the West, Whitebeard had to be banned as a leader even without the boat. Ah, I don't agree with the West ban list, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. There was this period of time where like the Western ban lists were like so different from the like the Japanese mm. ban list. Like they just straight up banned Whitebeard as a leader. Yeah, like why? Oh yeah, they yeah. did. Right. They just straight up banned. Nami, right? They banned a lot of things. Oh. They banned Nami, they yeah. banned they ban Whitebeard. Yeah. I think they banned Dadan as well, right? I think that was a knee-jerk reaction oh, and yeah. totally I mean, I mean to be fair, the ban list only applied for like a set, for like half a set if I recall. Yeah. It was termed the OPO 4.5 set. Yeah. Mm, 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 so, mm. Uh, but yeah, I think it's pretty extreme, right? Like how like you compare the English side of things to the Japanese side of things. But I mean, recently mm-hmm. at least they announced that the that the new Sak- like the Sakazuki ban list will be applied to the English side as well. So I think that's like maybe a yeah, step so in the right direction to get like all of us on like the like even playing field, having the same ban list. Yeah, but Raccoon yeah. is saying that it's not going to be banned at the start of 06, it's uh, 07. For I them. mean, it's the same for so us. It's, like it's, it's, it's the same for us. Only Our Sakazuki on, only got banned in OPO 07. So I think it's fair for your Sakazuki to only be banned in OPO 07 as well. Right. Which also means that they will have an entire 06 with Sakazuki sharing everything. Honestly, now. honestly, Sakazuki in 06 is not the most like. Oh wait, it's bro- it has the highest ceiling, but it's not the most broken deck. Like compared to White Beard. White Boat. Yeah. It's like this Moria. Moria still be. Uh, it, it, to me, it's still a 50 50 with Sakazuki if he do not high roll you with constant. Uh, like Moria into Moria, for example. Oh, just so, peril. Go it's first a, and. It's a deck with the highest ceiling for sure. Just not like super busted. Reju mm-hmm. best deck in format, nah nah nah. <laughs> you, you get hard checked by RP Law. Yeah, you wanna try playing against RP Law? Like all your card tags just erase them, dude. <laughs> I, I I experienced that firsthand. Like you know how I did that whole Twitter chooses what deck I played? Yeah, they chose Reju for me and I killed it into RP Law. Not oh, not, not not fun at all. Like my cards didn't even have tags for like the whole game. Oh dear. <laughs> Super I just got my face <laughs> smashed in, dude. Not not fun at all. But but if yeah. Law yeah. Becomes meta, if RP law becomes meta, Perona becomes good, right? Mm, that's something that we probably have to experiment. Though the thing about RP law, right, is that it's sort of still sort of like a removal deck. And as I've said, right, like green decks, what do they struggle with? They struggle with removal. So I think because the thing about Perona is like you're answering like one card a turn for the most part. Like you're just going tap and then uh, probably real or X Drake, right? Just to pop one card on the board. But the RP Law can shit out like two cards every turn. While having cards like Reju and Queen to like get them resources to continue with their like uh, swarming. So I think Perona is can be quite easily overwhelmed. Especially if they don't go second. Yeah, that's another thing you need to touch on. I think yeah. Perona is too too reliant on going second to have a good game, I feel. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, because I I was looking at Sabo, the secret Sabo, I think it would be a good card to include in Perona. So I was just thinking if that would be... Yeah, 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 I think, I think, yeah. I think Perona definitely more playable. Yeah, for sure, because now that Saka is gone, right, a lot of, like, bot-centric decks suddenly just become relevant, I feel. Yeah, Yeah, like, all the... Yeah, all the greens, like, actually interacting with your opponent is back, it's back. You can can attach Dawn to your characters and attack. I haven't been doing that for ages. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't, like, I think after Sakazuki became meta, like, most of the time, like, I don't even find myself attaching my Dawn to my characters. I'm just using, like, mm-hmm. tapping out my Dawn to, like, blow shit up. Yeah, so, yep. finally, I can attach my Dawns and attack for numbers. For sure, a healthier meta. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I think that's probably, like, maybe we can end off the discussion with this. Like, what, what do you all feel, maybe, what do you all feel, like, going into, like, this new meta? What do you all think it will be about? 
what do you think the new meta will be revolved around? Last, like, we can say for, like, OPO6, OPO, uh, early OPO7, it was probably, like, a removal-heavy meta game. Then, for example, OPO1 mm. to OPO4 was sort of, like, a bot-centric meta game. So what do you all feel moving forward? Do you think the meta will revert back to, like, a sort of bot-centric? Or do you all feel maybe it's gonna be still, like, removal with, like, yeah, Black Luchi and Moira running around? Mm, for me, the deck to beat in 07 is an L. So, you have to play a deck at least gives you a 50-50 uh, matchup against NL. Because NL is running rampant in like flagships everywhere and on mm. in Japan too. So if you're playing a deck that hard loses to NL, uh, that is definitely not the way to go about it. So uh, choosing uh the first step would be to choose a deck that goes that, that can, can actually beat NL in a fair fight. Then from there you choose your favorite leader. That's that's how I see the meta game now. Because there are so many uh options to choose from, so many leaders that are back yeah, now that so, Sakazuki is like yeah. out of the picture, like suddenly you have so many decks that can be relevant. Yeah, a lot of like bot centric decks suddenly come back into the game just because like you have this like huge removal monster just removed from the game. So Noah, what, are, what do you think are the top 5 decks that can take on NL in a fair fight? Fair Number 1 is NL. <laughs> <laughs> no, just be right. I think some of the decks that could win NL would probably be uh, your black yellow luffy you just get really big on your leaders and then develop your board and then other than that would be blue decks so specifically because you can have access to pudding mm -hmm. and as, other than that i think it might be tough for other decks so uh, luchi, luchi is actually a good deck against an l2 black decks yeah. mm. <laughs> because of the constant ability to to play moria basically moria yeah. is still a very broken card in 07 I think that's why so I still think it's gonna be a bot centric meta because like Moria still exists mm -hmm. and like Bot Yellow they still would want to play a bunch of like, Yamato or a lot of A side. It's still gonna be very cluttered on the board and that will lead to kind of like very ridiculous bot states. Not looking mm -hmm. forward to that, but I think it's it's yeah that's but the the thing is no removal, no uh, not a lot. So that's uh, not that good. much, not that much, not that much. Yeah, not Saka level removal, so that's good. Bring <laughs> Red back. I want to play my tank that cost shanks, man. I just want to bomb shit. <laughs> you can play VV, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, and you we were VV, Noah. we were we were on this topic about Ace, right? So like one thing that me and Noah discussed like yesterday was that uh, Ace not I mean compared to like like uh compared to Moria, it's like you can't really keep up in terms of the value game because like. Moria is like shitting out like three cards at once with one card, but Ace you use like maybe you play a Shanks, you blow up one card, you blow up the Moria, but like that other body that it, it, it cheated out is still there. It's still there. Yeah, yeah, so mm -hmm. I think I think the meta game will be like more. I I, I feel in my opinion the meta game is shaping up to be more of like a tall meta game, like big big mm -hmm. cards, like yeah. yeah. Big bodies. Big bodies, and like I guess the only real aggro deck in the meta game is like RP Law. That's because of how fast the deck can go and like how like mm. solid like the package is in itself. Though I do feel that yes, I do think RP Law probably still gonna be one of the best decks in the format. But the thing is RP Law is like super peace reliant. And it doesn't really have like a mm. it doesn't really have like a way to consistently like carry out its game plan. Compared to like its predecessor RG Law in the past, where you have like Nami, Bonnie, like a lot of like that even Dadan, like searchers, right? RP Law, none of that. So it's not like yeah. A consistent aggro deck per se, though I do think that it is definitely the best aggro deck, which is what cements it as probably like tier one in my opinion. Yeah, but I think other than that, other than just I think RP Law is like the main exclusion. Like everything else is like tall in my opinion. Like going tall, mm -hmm. tall like big cuts on the board. Yeah. What do you all feel? Yeah, which is why yeah, I, I I agree. Yeah. Which is why you are seeing this VV deck popping off randomly in Japan. <laughs> Because they play big cuts, rush, big cuts, rush, right? Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not a big fan of the deck though. Because <laughs> I don't like leaders that come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree, man. I mean, Wait, I hope Vivi gets the point. But a personal leader that I think is viable in the meta game is actually Nami. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about Nami, but yeah, you're right. Nami is so because, strong now. Because the meta is getting a lot slower. Yeah, and there's no mm. Sakazuki. Yeah, no more bottom decking, so Nami doesn't the deck count doesn't increase. Oh uh, yeah. But I think yeah, I, I think because Crocodile build is really strong too. 
I, I think the issue with oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah there's like this new yeah there's this new Kuja pirates uh like uh Nami variant going around which I actually just saw in really? today yeah I saw in today's flagship it actually it did pretty good like they're running cards like the new like this new counter event that bounces like the one that oh, no. uh, that was in OPO six that was the upgrade Nami got in OPO six like uh plus draw one card and plus one gave to your leader so that's like a card that they're running four copies of right now. I mean, mainly just because of the just draw one. But yeah, in OP... A white smoke, right? Yeah, white smoke. Then in OPO 7, they got like a sort of like Kuja Pirate package where you can run... <laughs> there's this new 3-cost blocker that draws you a card when it's split. Oh, yeah. yeah, then there's the new... Obviously, there's the... 2-cost event. The 2-cost yeah, event that the... allows you to bounce a, a minion back to your hand so that, they, so that they can keep recycling their Kayas. Yeah, and then there's a dedicated <laughs> searcher for them as well. And mm. like most of them are like cutting. I think if you're running the you're running this Kuja Pirate package, you just cut down on the Impel Down package with Buggy and like All Stars. So it's like it's a replacement. Another variant that I've seen going around is this Seven More Lords build with Sengoku. Do you know that Sengoku, Sengoku can find can find Love Love Beam? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That was one I was quite excited for actually because I I've been running Nami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think I, 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 um, during the Chinese New Year tourney. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, Mickey, yeah, um, Mickey, no, Mickey tried stuff. it out. Mickey tried out the yeah, Kuja yeah, Pirates. Mickey tried it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty yeah. cool, pretty I'm, cool. I'm really excited for that. Um, uh, I've heard about the Kuja thing. And to be honest, I I, 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 I hear Noah because, um, you know, the whole seven cost crop, blue crop, you know, the one with the banish, but then you attach one down to him and everything is suddenly cheaper, like you got a fat great Singapore sale kind of thing. <laughs> um, on all your events, and you sit there with like, with like ten dons and like come at me, bro. You know, um, I think that's that's uh, that's that's actually quite interesting. Um, I tried the build uh, with Sakazuki around; it was impossible because the moment he goes down, right, and I'm ready to you know counter out of everything, like he gets removed, and that's very costly for a Nami player. You know, if you spend seven don calling down prop. Um, only for it to be removed in one turn, you know, um, and so, and so yeah. No, I I, I agree. I think Nami is going to be very interesting. Nami, I would dare say it's kind of like one of those. I would say, like what Tianhui was talking about with NL, that they're getting all these little patch notes, right? Oh no, sorry, Fabian, you were talking about the patch notes, right? I think Nami gets those little patch notes too. Probably not at the pace that Yellow gets it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like one, little, you know, you get a few cuts yeah, here and there, little, little upgrades, right? So yeah, I'm very excited for Nami. Uh, I've, I've kept the deck, I've refused to strip it down uh, just because, you know, I, I, I love it. I love just how you're just not playing fair. You know what I mean? Like, you're just not playing the game that people want you to play. You're being a total asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pain, playing right? solitaire, and, um, dude. <laughs> I know, I know. And it's just solitaire. To me, I love solitaire. And this is one of the cheapest decks to build right now. Everything's oh yeah? Yeah, yeah it's there. like CNR, CNR's deck. And it's yeah. Nami leader, Nami popular, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah very popular. You know what? She deserves to get. Is she getting a new leader in the whole oh, the new right. six starter series? Oh uh, no, no, she's no, not. Not in Star. Star decks are. Uh, starter decks is like White Beard, uh, Uta, White Beard, Uta, yes. Dofi. Uh, Papa Luffy's coming out. Yeah, Papa Luffy. Smoker, 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 and, Smoker. Yeah, and Karakuri. <laughs> I'm excited for White Beard, dude. I want to play my. Yeah. I want to play the old man again. My nine cost white bear though. Then I, but I think that card's not probably not that good now. But I, I want to have the feeling of just slamming down ace on seven and just rushing my opponent's face. I, I miss that. I miss yeah. that. I really miss uh, that. Yeah. I do. I do. Yeah. I do too. I I I miss watching you guys uh play white beard because I remember there was one of the championship rounds. Uh, the one I think it was at Suntech. It's the one with Noel slapping the cards. Oh, that was Jo. Oh, Great Granite Granite Show Open. G oh yeah 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 that was with that was with full power white beard that was with both beard yeah that was that was that was both beard you know what I mean and uh, right before the ban list right yeah 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 that was the last couple of days yeah last tournament for both beard I remember I interviewed every SFK player I think for the tournament no no both beard won though no both yeah Zoro Zoro won Zoro I think it was Zoro yeah Zoro and Luchi just yeah anti anti both beard I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Alfred was on Luchi, right? Yeah, Alfred was on Luchi. Uh, yes, yeah. Alfred was on Luchi. I remember I was talking to Gavin, I was talking to Sky, I was talking to Genway as well, you know. And we were just like, this this, this, this damn game, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> well, you only have two sides to pick. You either pick Boat Beard or you pick Kill Boat Beard. No in between. Yeah. 
None of that Karakuri, <laughs> none of that Karakuri nonsense, yeah, like, dude. Precisely, that's why I joined the fan, fan event, 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 wasn't in the main part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and when Karakuri was like, it's, it's just like what our discussion here about Sakazuki, isn't it? You I know? mean, it's not as polarizing. <laughs> it's not as polarizing. Yeah. Because back then it was Boatbeard or that, that killed Boatbeard. I mean, yeah, then, no then when it comes... You had no choice. Yeah, and when it came to Sakazuki, it was, okay, I can play Sakazuki, or I can play Moria, or I can play Karakuri. Like, there's so... A, a few more options. Yeah, there's so many more <laughs> options, dude. Especially in 06. 06, like, I feel, it gave, like, the game a new dimension. And, like, I don't think it's a very... I mean, I, I don't really like it, but it gave it so much variety. Like, so many decks become viable again. Like, yeah. not really again, but, like, there are more viable decks. Yeah, yeah so it helps with diversity. Yeah. Having like different decks. I was gonna say like um like I, I one of the one of the things I wanted to ask you guys on the podcast was like what what are the funky you know funky town stuff that you guys are working on, so like uh, for me it was two things. Um, one is I was very happy. I think it was in the wasn't the latest set they released a blue blocker ace, the five cost one. Oh, I wish that card had an open art, man. I know, me too. Cause like it was the first time that you get to reset the top of your deck. You know what I mean? And then that allowed me to play. Because the SFK boys help me get my Sanjis, right? So that lets me do this whole Sanji Mihawk thing. And I could finally do it like consistently. So that's what my poor Hancock, you know, deck feels like. Um, I just like the RNGs is it. Uh, but the other thing that I was trying to build was, um, I call it the Wings of the Pirate King. So you know how, I remember, there was a lot of hype around the Zoro Sanji starter deck when it first came out. Because it was Dual Leader, Resend 7 cards, and you're like, oh gosh, you know, you remember that starter deck kit? Seven cost, seven thousand power thing that no one runs. Everyone went magnet, but there was that other one that came with the starter deck. Yeah, you no, know? yeah, yeah, like you know, like like oh, giving no. these un like you know forgotten and banished cards like a chance. You know what I mean? Um, uh, but well, yeah, one of the projects I'm currently working on uh is to do Wings of the Pirate King, whereby it's a blue and green deck that plays both the SEC Zoro that hits a lot, and then Sanji that calls out more shit. Um. Just, just for the lols. Uh, it's still a work in progress. It is so terrible. Um, so I'm still trying to figure out how to make it a little bit better. That's probably what I'll be playing. What are you going to be playing, Fabian? Into I'm, I'm, uh, the, the next meta? I'm I'm honestly... I mean, all of us at SNK are meta slaves. We just play good decks. But like the deck I'm going to be playing... I'm not going to play it now. Let me get that straight. I'm not playing yellow decks. <laughs> <laughs> never, never in my life. If you ever see me playing a yellow deck, you know, that's the weird thing, you know. I, I don't want to play yellow decks, but I have, like, all the yellow alternate arts. I, I, I'm not kidding you, dude. This yellow alternate arts, are, they, they look too good. They look good. They yeah, look yellow good. alternate arts are super nice. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's besides the point. But I'm going to be playing mainly uh, RP Law. I mean, that's that was what I was experimenting with. And honestly, it gave me, like, a breath of fresh air. Like, I really enjoy mm -hmm. just playing this aggro play style. And back to Law, right? Back to Law. Then uh, yeah. the second deck that I'm thinking is probably gonna be um, Moria actually. Might go back to Moria. Mm. I, I just personally as a player, I really enjoy like toolboxing from my uh, like using my trash as a resource. Like having like alternate avenues of resources. Yeah, that's what I like when I'm looking for like a, a deck to play in card games. So probably gonna explore one of these two decks because I think I still think Moria is probably gonna be good. If if I'm gonna play a black deck, I'm probably gonna experiment between Moria and Luchi. Yeah, then see which one I like better. I haven't experimented with Luchi, but on like in theory, I think Moria should still be pretty good. But if I don't vibe with either of those, I just play RP Law. I, I enjoy playing Law. Mm, mm. I would love to see you on your one offs RG. Nah, RG nah, RG. nah, not in RP Law. <laughs> I, 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 I sincerely hope RG Law comes back because I really like decks like RG Law and Reju, like because they have so much flavor. Like, they are actually, mm -hmm. like, they're so fun. Like, RG Law is, like, literally sham room shambles, right? In, like, the anime, yeah. manga. Then, Reiju is, like, transform transforming. So, I think it's, like, playing these decks are, like, so much more fun compared to, like, the other decks. Like, what 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 flavor is, like, what flavor does, like, uh, Purple Luffy have? Ramp? Like, how, does this, oh, yeah, right. the, how does this make sense? Like, what, what does Luffy do to ramp up in, in I, I don't know, like, gear, gear, his gears, I guess, but... Yeah, it doesn't really... Hmm, doesn't click with the me. The answer is meat. The answer is meat. Um, <laughs> mm. <laughs> probably, probably. Oh, you tell me. Uh, for me, I typically try to pick a leader from the latest set to try it out. 
un~ unless I really can't beat like the existing meta game written leader then I'll go back to the old leader because I think it's more challenging I think it's more interesting to try a new leader every set once in a while and try to uh, beat the meta with a new leader so r- I'm, I'm focusing a lot on Luchi now even when like post ban this right I'm pre ban this for example uh, sorry pre ban this when Saka is still running rampant I was still playing around with Luchi and I think Luchi will be the deck that will be sticking with me for the rest of the set yeah mm. personally for me yeah cool Azraf go okay. what about you? the deck that I'm like 100% meaning Bonnie good or bad I love Bonnie I love the alternate the story behind the alternate but decks I'm messing around with it's either gonna be like the Opio 1 Luffy just gonna kind of bring it back cause Akazuki's not around or Red Purple mm. Luffy I like Red Purple Luffy a lot even though it's like a a little bit kind of fragile sometimes if you, if you don't have it you don't have it but it's fun I'd like to ramp up to white beard and just sing for like 8k <laughs> <laughs> how about you Noah? oh this meta I will definitely be playing Boba and Pop, but other decks that are messing around like, or trying to build right now I'm looking at uh, red black Sabo mainly because no more mm-hmm. bottom decking stuff or not as many so in the Ooh. KO meta might have a chance then another meme deck that I'm looking at is Corazon. Corazon. Well, Corazon in OPO5. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so I, I'm just trying to see how how it can be uh how it can find a place in this meta. Probably not. You know, good Noah, thing. I still have the video of you testing pushing Corazon from the last time, yeah? It's good <laughs> to see that you're bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that would be cool, that would be cool. Moving forward, I'm just excited for OPO8, dude. <laughs> OPO7 huh? just came out. Yeah. I'm excited for OPO8. <laughs> yeah, wow. When is it coming out? Man? It's like in three months' time, too. <laughs> yeah, three months. Oh. Yeah. I think it's in May. Right? May, May, yeah, late May, late May. Late May. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to play my, yeah. my white beard pirates again. <laughs> I just want that Nami, supposed Nami leader. Oh, that's that's been that's been, been leaks. Yeah, there's been leaks going around <laughs> saying like. Yeah. Yeah. What what? Sure, like, I thought I thought you'd be more hyped for the chopper leader then. Oh, oh, 100%. But like, I, want, I, I bought all the Vegapunk cards, I bought the AK uh-huh. Island cards, I want to make, <laughs> make it work. Oh, make, so just, sad. maybe just make a better, a better, better Vegapunk, right? Vegapunk, yeah. <laughs> maybe a, le- a AK leader that can actually swing. Yeah, let's yeah, do that. That would be nice. But, but. but which chopper is the thing, yeah? Yeah. Red, black, like, okay. I hope the artwork is like three times. Good. They said, they said it would be red, black. Okay, based on leaks, they said it would be a uh, red, yellow, Marco. Uh, blue, yellow, red, put... blue, red, blue, Marco. Oh, red, blue? Red, red, blue. blue. Red, blue, Marco. I think it might be red, yellow, though, because of Ace. Ace has a white, like, mm. secret Ace. I Wait. heard it's red, blue. Ah, red, what? blue, ch- ah. Marco. Red, black, chopper. Please, no. Oh, what, what, what is red, blue? Uh, I have this PTSD with Vivi already. This, this two, this, <laughs> this two... Dude, dude, Fabian, imagine a red, blue leader that can attack. It will be great. These two colors don't do jack shit together. Oh, Sanji oh, to white beard. I think that's what we've been waiting for. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> the spice is revealed. Yeah, but but uh okay yeah so it's uh, gonna be red blue Marco blue yellow pudding I think purple black king right purple black king purple black king yeah then red red black chopper then uh what's the what was what was carrot, the green leader carrot, green carrot oh yeah yeah carrot carrot yeah. She's the, she's the only she's the only mono color leader in this set. Oh, so oh, yeah, so you like see how they are alternating. The- yeah, they're like alternating. Like in O five, we had like sort of like a mix. Yeah, we have a mix. I think then oh no 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 O oh, seven. Oh, there's a, there's a black really leader too if I'm not wrong. Oh, oh. Hello. really man? Hey, like, that's second cool. most favorite yes. character in One Piece. It's got two cards minus five to everything. Wait, what's your first? <laughs> My first. Definitely yeah. law. No one okay. loves law. Yeah. Law. Everyone loves law. Everyone loves law. Right. I love law. <laughs> but favorite Devil Fruit. White beard, white beard. So cool. Yeah. Oh. Alright, so Absolutely. I think there's a good place to close the session. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks everyone for joining us for like so, sort of like this Q Q and A podcast. Yeah, we'll see what we can do with it. But hopefully we do some more of this in the future. Maybe we have, we have yeah. like new crazy That's ideas. Fine. Yeah, like gold, gold format. Maybe we can try that out, right? Gold, gold format. format. Yeah, yeah let's let, let's see where we can go with that. But yeah, anyways, thanks everyone for joining the event. Uh, so do 
do give like everyone just give everyone here like maybe just give their channels a look give them a like give them a like, subscribe go ahead so yeah I'll probably just attach their handles somewhere i'll ask my editor to put it in but yeah so thanks everyone for joining thanks, 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 thanks for those things like this really fun yeah, thank you so much for yeah you. Thank you for running from the bus to your house to your computer <laughs> with the bucket hat still on. From a flex you know? Yeah, bro. So all I... of us were just telling him, like, you yeah, know, bro, calm down. It's okay. It's okay. You don't have to be on time. And he was like, sprinting, you know. When he fired up the stream, I could hear the panting. I was like, okay, guys, so today we're going to do a soundcheck. I was like, wow, that is dedication right there, okay? So if you all want to get coaching, get it from Fabian. Don't get it from TMA. Wow. Okay. Gotcha. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. It's fine. Get it from Fabian. I don't do coaching, guys. <laughs> thanks for thanks for the shout out. Yeah, but thanks thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Really, really have fun. Yeah. Hopefully we can do some more of this in the future. Yeah. We should, we should. Yeah, we should. Sneak peek for the next podcast we have we're gonna have a special guest. The world champion Mr. Guan Rong. Ooh, Ooh, right. Right. Maybe. Our King, first ever power King. King. I mean actually, the King. actually he's not really the first. Like there was like the the guy before him was the first, but people are calling Guan Rong the first because he won like the first global world event. Yeah, it was like the first world champion. Yeah, yeah, there was like world yeah, there was there there is an actual first. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah it's like one of the Japanese players. But yeah, I mean, he co- the first the first conquered the Asia Asia seas, but Guan Rong conquered the whoa overseas. right whoa uh, the ooh, first Asia seas the Asia seas yeah two fire king man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're gonna have him on board for the next podcast. So, stay tuned, stay tuned. Bye. Yeah. All right, see ya, guys. Bye bye. All right. Bye-bye.